Now I'm going to talk to the parishioner, to the man or the woman who goes out and witnesses. And they forget. They forget when they talk to people that they used to be just like them. They'd say, oh, I tried to reach so-and-so, and, and, and they will never answer. They're this and they're that, and I'm so angry. How could they do? Well, you know what? You forget. They act just like you. They're doing just what you did. How dare you be angry with them? Many people think they're a witness for God. And you know what they do? Because they won't live the life. They're only out there playing games with God. They are destroying. They are giving people just enough of Jesus Christ to make them immune to the truth. Just enough of twisting it with a lie to make themselves, well, I brought this one to church and look at how many I brought into church. I had a woman pull that on me. <laughs> like I said, she wrote out the Bible every day. She wrote out the Bible all day long. But her attitude stunk. I talked to her one day and I said to her, you know, your neighbor thinks the world of you. And her attitude was, <clears throat> if she thought the world of me, she would go to church. Well, you know, the woman not too long before that had just lost her husband. She was suffering awfully bad. And this one can pull on an attitude because she couldn't get her to go to church. This one, because she writes out the Bible, that makes her God himself, where she can look down her nose that she's the best of the best. I'm telling you, that woman sat in church and she worked a witchcraft like you never saw. That if you dared go to the altar, she would work against you and she would literally pull you down. She didn't pull Satan down. She didn't, but she pull you down. Because these people are so ignorant, they pray against people. They don't pray against powers and principalities and rulers of wickedness. They pray against people. They fight and they smite and they bite and they hate and they envy and they never admit it. It's all done in secret. Their secret closet is filled with demonic forces that hurt a real Christian. Are you that way? Is that the way you think? Do you think that because you go to church every Sunday and you get 15 minutes of the Bible or maybe a half an hour of the Bible and maybe you read a tiny devotional every day that you are qualified to judge and condemn somebody who won't go when they can feel something wrong with you? You're a destroyer. You're not somebody. The only way you can get out of that. And God has shown me many times the only way he would tell me. He would let me go through something and he'd say, one way out, Marion. Pray out of it. I'll show you how to pray out of it. Pray out of it. Because people need to understand. They need to pray out of it. Now the devil's children can't imitate this. They don't know God. They don't know where the truth is. All they know is deception. Satan only has the tool of deception. And you give him all the power. You give it to him through fear, through lack of understanding, through ignorance, through your sins of gossip and cheating and lying. That's a, And that little lie, oh, that little one that you thought, God's, it's going to be okay. And then you forgot to even take it to God. You forgot to even talk to him about it. That little lie where maybe you exaggerated to talk to them for a testimony. It's going to be all right. God says, I can go out there and lie. It's going to be all right. What difference is there between you and a politician? What? That's what they believe. They believe it's okay to lie. I'm talking to you today. And I appeal to you in the name of Jesus as gently and as kindly as I can. You are precious to God. He loves you, but you're not so precious that you are better than any other. That one he is going to have go to him the right way, and you're going to be able to get in some other way. That oh, this one over here is going to have to work and to get close to him, but you, you don't have to work to get close to him because you've got it all. 
You've been told that. You've been told once saved, always saved. You've been told that once you start heading towards God, and a lot of that is true because it's written in Romans, that once you take a step towards God, that he's taken care of it and many things from behind. But you don't understand. It has to do with you walking after the Spirit. Not after yourself. Not after what you think and feel or want. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. The Spirit is so gentle when it comes to other souls. Like my preaching, I, it's very, I know the kind of preaching I do. It's very straightforward and I'll tell it. But when I work with souls, I'm telling you, they will tell you personally, I'm as gentle as anything because I know who they are. I know they belong to God and I would not dare talk to any man as though I was better. And I wouldn't dare treat them like they were not a Christian. Because no matter what they don't know, they can learn it. No, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't sit and, and, and do what some pastors do. You have family you want picked up at the airport. Go get so-and-so to do it. Well, you have family right there that can do it, but no, these are worthless. We don't need them. God, they can't, they can't sit at the table. I can remember going for how many years? where I wasn't allowed to sit at the table with other people because with they were pastors, quote and unquote, better than anybody else. And you, you can scrub, scrub the latrines to get on your hands and knees and scrub the floors and the walls and everything. But that's all you were good for. You weren't good for nothing else. You, you didn't have any brains because you just weren't good for anything else. Now, I don't hold that against them and I resent them. It's impossible because they they passed away. So, you know, but in my heart, I loved them. I cried out to God for them. Up until even the day they died, when they were dying, I was praying for God to find a way to use me, to heal and deliver them, to help them. That's what you should be doing to those that offend you and hurt you. Pray for them. You don't pray, oh, God, bless them, give them this and do that. That's not what he's talking about. Pray for them for find a way, dear God, to make sure they don't miss the way. Find a way, oh, God, if it's at all possible to make sure that they don't miss the way. Because the worst thing that could happen to them is for them to miss the way. So that's the one thing I make sure I pray for. You don't have to listen to me. I'm not anybody that you should have to listen to. But please, just consider some of the things that I'm talking about. I'm not asking you to follow this word for word. And this is, you must do it this way. I have no idea how God's going to lead you into dying to self. That's between you and God. When you start communicating with him, that's between you and him. That ain't between me. I don't want to know nothing about it. I don't want to have anything to do with it because that's your life. Just like I wouldn't tell you what to do with your money, I will never tell you what to do with your soul. But I will tell you what is right and what is wrong. I will do that. 